Joe O'Connell, Sandpiper Pwn. Today we're going to show you how to put an air aim kit into an S15 metallic pwn. Out front we've got some examples of Sandpiper Genuine Parts, Wet End Kit, Air End Kit. On the table with our S15 we also have an S20 metallic and an S30 metallic. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man method and machine, but for video purposes some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation please pause this video until you've completed any phase of the process. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts, Wet End and Air End Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rupp video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that's been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. While the pumps are different in size and flow, the techniques used in the rebuild of the S15 metallic are also applied to the commonality of the S20 metallic and the S30 metallic. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, O-ring pick, 12 inch pry bars, sockets and or wrenches, 1 half inch, 9 16 inch, 5 8 inch, 11 16 inch, 1 and 5 16 inch 6 point socket, 5 16 inch socket head Allen wrench. All right. Our air and kit install today is going to include sleeve and spool, pilot valve, gaskets, O-rings, and some bushings. So let's get started. We're going to start by taking the manifold off. And just for ease of assembly and disassembly, we're going to use a 3 8 inch um, impact gun. So we're going to start with taking this manifold, these bolts out right here. Once you have the bolts removed from the discharge manifold, go ahead and set that aside. And take the seats and the check balls. Flip the unit over. And remove the suction side manifold. Loosen all the bolts. Take the manifold and set it aside. The same here, you can take the seats and the check balls. Set the unit up on its side, and you want to take off one of the outer chambers. Once you get the bolts loosened, you can set the outer chamber aside. And we'll take off the diaphragm assembly. Go ahead and break that loose. It may be a little difficult if the pump's been in use for a while. When you get it loose, you'll either get just the diaphragm assembly or you'll get the diaphragm assembly and the rod. Either way, it doesn't matter. Take the bumper and set it aside. Flip the unit over and take the opposite chamber off. Get the outer chamber off, set that aside, pull the diaphragm assembly out. Now we have just the air side center section. 
set the bumper aside. We want to take off the four socket head cap screws on the inner chamber. When you get those removed, you can take the inner chamber off, take the gasket below the inner chamber, and you can discard the gasket. Take off the air inlet cap next, take the four screws out. air inlet cap and a gasket. You can discard the gasket. Then the pilot valve comes out. You can discard the gasket behind the pilot valve and the pilot valve. We're going to replace those components from our air in kit. Then we can take off the other inner chamber. Again, we have to remove the four socket head cap screws of it. Set the inner chamber aside and discard the gasket underneath it. Go ahead and take the main air valve assembly off next. Move the main air valve assembly and discard the gasket. Pull the U-cup seals out of the intermediate. You want to remove the U-cup seals from both sides of the intermediate. We'll be replacing those here shortly. And remove the actuator plungers. Now with a small screwdriver or a pair of pliers, you want to remove the star ring retainer from the bushing. You're going to take the bushing out next. You may need something to wedge into the bushing to get it to come out. Small wood screw. In this case, we're using a pair of needle nose pliers. And we want to pull out the actuator plunger o ring. Flip the intermediate over and repeat the process on the other side. Moving the star ring the bushing, and the actuator plunger o-ring. You can discard all these components. Now we want to inspect the intermediate. You want to inspect the faces. Make sure there's no cuts, grooves, gouges in it. You want to inspect the bearings also. Make sure the bearings are round and not oval. Take the main air valve assembly and we're going to take the end caps off the main air valve assembly now. And pull the bumper out of there. And the spool. Discard the spool. Take the opposite end cap off. And pull the bumper out of there. I'm going to take a deep well socket, set it upright, make sure the socket is big enough to push the sleeve out, but small enough to still fit in the bore of the air valve body. Inspect the main air valve assembly body. You want to inspect the machine faces. Go ahead and open up your air in kit. Set the components out so we can start reassembling the pump. First we want to take the sleeve from the main air valve, put the O-rings on it. Make sure you get each O-ring into the O-ring grooves in the sleeve. Apply a little grease to the sleeve. 
and a little grease to the bore of the main air valve body. Grease is applied to keep the items from catching, binding, or cutting while assembling components. Press the sleeve in, pressing and twisting as it goes in not to roll an o-ring, cut an o-ring. Don't worry about centering it. It will self-align when you put the end caps in. Next we're going to put the bumper in. Bumper has two sides. It has an X cut in one side and a protrusion on the other side. The X faces the sleeve. Take our end cap, remove the old O-rings from the end cap. and replace with new ones. And we're going to apply a little grease on each one of the O-rings. Press the end cap in. This will help self-align the sleeve. Get the four cap screws in. And then you want to tighten them in a cross pattern and torque to the specification called out in the service and operating manual. Then flip the unit over, install your spool. You don't want to force this in, you want to twist and wiggle the spool until it drops in. Now we're going to put our bumper. Remember the X face of the bumper goes against the sleeve. And replace the O-rings on the end cap. Make sure you use a little grease on the O-rings before you install the end cap back into the body. Press the end cap into the body, lining up the holes. Thread the bolts in and tighten in a crossing pattern to the torque specifications called out in the service and operating manual. Take our intermediate next. I'm going to install the U-cup seals on both sides. You need to apply a little grease to the U-cup seal. There's an open side and a flat side to the U-cup seal. The flat face of the U-cup seal goes against the bearing. Make sure you get the U-cup seal seated in the receiver. And repeat the process on the opposite side. We're going to go ahead and install the actuator plunger bushing into the intermediate. First we have to put the actuator plunger o-ring in. Make sure you get it down into the receiver groove for the o-ring. Next is the bushing. Bushing can go in either way. There is no up or down to the bushing. Push it down. Make sure you get it seated in there. Then we're going to use our star ring. Our star ring is a concave star ring. The open cup of the concave star ring faces outward. Press it down in there and make sure you get each finger of the star ring down below the lip. And flip the unit over and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, putting this O-ring in, make sure it's all the way down into the receiver groove. Take our bushing, press it in, and then our concave star ring. The open cup of the concave star ring faces up. Press the star ring in, and then make sure each finger is down below the lip of the receiver.
Next we'll put in our actuator plungers. I'm going to apply a little grease to the actuator plunger. I'm going to go in through the pilot port. Stick the actuator plunger in through the hole there. Work it back and forth. I'm going to do both of them. So again, putting a little grease on our actuator plunger. Installing the actuator plunger through the pilot port. Now we'll install the inner chambers. First we're going to put our gasket on. Make sure that you line up the gasket with the air porting in the intermediate in the actuator plunger. Inspect the inner chamber for casting integrity and inspect the machine faces and radiuses for damage or material buildup. Scarring scratches or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Ensure the radius on the inside of the chamber is maintained during cleanup. Replace the chamber if necessary. Inner chamber needs to line up with the air porting and the actuator plunger also. Take four of the socket head cap screws and install those. And then torque them down in a crossing pattern. You'll find the torque specifications in your service and operating manual. Flip the unit over and we're going to repeat the same process on the opposite side. Again ensuring that our gasket is lined up with the correct porting. and inspecting our inner chamber, the faces, the surfaces, the radiuses. And installing the four cap screws. Once you got them threaded in, you need to torque them down in a crossing pattern to the manufacturer's stated torque specifications in the service and operating manual. Next we'll install our pilot valve. I'm going to reach in first and push the actuator plungers all the way across. Make sure they're out of the way. Take our new pilot valve, our new gaskets. Pilot valve spool comes pre-lubricated. You want to pop that out and make sure there's a little grease on each one of the o-rings. If not, you can apply a little more. Take your pilot valve gasket. There's no top or bottom to the gasket. Go ahead and place that in the intermediate, making sure your actuator plungers are out of the way. You don't want the actuator plungers to be pressed down by the pilot valve as you tighten it down. Then your air inlet cap gasket and your air inlet cap. Thread the screws in. Then you want to torque those down in a crossing pattern to the torque specifications called out on the service manual. Install your diaphragm rod. First you want to apply a little grease to the bore where the U-cup and the bearings are. Do that on both sides. Make sure you have your bumper on before you install it. Then you want to line up the bolt holes in the diaphragm with the bolt holes in the inner chamber.
and we're going to install our outer chamber. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring scratches or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Ensure the radius on the inside of the chamber is maintained during cleanup. Replace the chamber if necessary. When aligning the outer chamber, be sure that the discharge port faces the nameplate. Go ahead and put in your cap screws and you can tighten those down in a crossing pattern. This is hand tight all the way around. I'm going to flip the unit over now. We're going to install the opposite diaphragm assembly. First we want to make sure that we put our bumper onto our diaphragm rod. And we want to thread the assembly onto the rod. You don't want to thread it all the way down yet. Just want to get it on the rod. We have to invert the diaphragm rod across. So we're going to take a couple of pry bars and we're going to get up under the diaphragm plate. It's pretty important that when you do this, you make sure you get under the inner diaphragm plate and not under the diaphragm. Then reinvert the diaphragm. We want to torque the diaphragm assembly to the diaphragm rod. Find the torque specifications in the service and operating manual. You want to make sure that you line bolt holes in the diaphragm up with the bolt holes in the inner chamber. If you can't do that at torque, always continue to tighten to the next bolt hole, never loosen. You want to keep tightening until you get to the next bolt hole. Make sure your hole alignment is correct with your diaphragm and your inner chamber. Once you have the two assemblies lined up, you can go ahead and reinstall the other outer chamber. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring scratches or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Ensure the radius on the inside of the chamber is maintained during cleanup. Replace the chamber if necessary. When aligning the outer chamber, be sure that the discharge port faces the nameplate. You get the alignment, you can install the bolts and tighten them down in a crossing pattern. There are no torque specifications for the outer chamber. This is hand tight. You want to make sure you get the bolts good and snug. You want to flip the pump over to the suction side. Nameplate will be facing down. You can drop your check balls in, install your seats. Seats are universal, they can go on either way. There is no top or bottom to the seats. Take our suction manifold. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring damage or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace is needed. Emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper can be used to clean the manifold up. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Once you get all the bolts in the suction side manifold, you want to tighten those down in a crossing pattern across all eight bolts. I'm going to bring that manifold down level onto the seats. There will be a gap left between the suction manifold and the outer chamber. 
This is okay. The sealing surface is compressed against the seat. You don't want to try to tighten the bolts until you make that gap disappear. You can break the chamber or the suction manifold. Flip the unit over. Go ahead and install the seats. Again, there is no up and down on the seat. It can be placed in either way. Make sure you set them down in the receiver. Set your check balls down on top of the seats. Then you want to take your discharge manifold and inspect that. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring damage or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace is needed. Emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper can be used to clean the manifold up. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Once you have your bolts installed into the discharge manifold, you want to tighten them down in a crossing pattern. Cross all eight bolts. Now we'll install our main air valve assembly. Main air valve gasket is one directional. You have to make sure that you line up the pilot valve porting holes in the gasket with the pilot valve porting holes in the intermediate. you're going to do the same thing with the main air valve. You want to make sure you line up those pilot valve porting holes in the main air valve with the pilot valve porting holes in the gasket in the intermediate. Thread in your cap screws and then you want to tighten them down in a crossing pattern to the torque specifications called out in the service and operating manual. That completes our airside rebuild of our S15 Metallic. If you're doing a complete rebuild, you might also want to see our wet side rebuild. Or for additional information, you can find us on the web at sandpiperpump.com. Contact after sales support at service.warrenrupp at idexcorp.com. Thanks.